everyone, Annie Dickerson here. And on behalf of the entire Good Egg Investments team, I wanted to welcome you to another episode of the Life and Money Show, where we talk about everything from investing to financial freedom, to parenting, traveling, creating a life by design, and everything in between. I'm here with my amazing co-host, Susan Elliott. Susan, how are you today? I'm doing really good, really good. It's a fully optimized Tuesday, which maybe Wednesday will be fully non-optimized, but right. today I'm feeling one very day efficient. at a time. <laughs> one day at a time. I already hit the gym. I did some training. I look at spent you. Some really good time with my kiddos. I woke up too early, but yeah, it was great. But anyway, um, so yes, we're today we're talking about pref equity, which is something that um is fairly new to all of us. Actually, I mean. It's it's something that's been around certainly for a long time, but you know, at every part of the market cycle, you've got to look up and and take a look at you know whether what you're doing still makes sense or whether there are new and emerging opportunities. And that's exactly what we found with Pref Equity. So I'm excited to dive in today. Um, for anybody who um, might be interested um, in what we're talking about today and might be interested in, um, investing alongside us. There's two, um, resources that I want to point you to. One is for any of our existing opportunities, whether pref equity or otherwise, um, the best place to learn about what's currently open and what's coming up is to go to our website and our open deals page, which you can access directly at goodegginvestments.com slash deals. And for anybody who's hearing about this opportunity that's coming up around Pref Equity that we haven't launched yet, but maybe you're interested and you want to kind of um, get on the list and save your spot, we've currently um, put out a survey to the Good Egg community and the Life and Money Show community to see who might be interested in, in investing alongside us. So um, if you're interested, especially after listening to our conversation here today, uh, we invite you to go and fill out that survey. Let us know if you're interested. Um, you can access that at goodegginvestments.com slash, okay, you ready? Um, it's easy, but it, it's got a few different parts. Pref-equity-survey. Okay. I tried to make it as easy as, as I could, people, but at least it's not Google dot four seven five nine pound to, you know, Flash so HB Z right. Okay. Seven. So I and did what I could just one F too, right? <laughs> one, one F. F yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. So good investments.com slash pref dash equity dash survey. We'll have that link for you in the show notes. Um, but okay. So enough talking about all the, the different things surrounding pref equity. Let's actually dive in and talk about um, pref equity, what it is, the pros and cons, and whether it might be uh, right for anybody listening to invest in a pref equity opportunity. So now um, we have this this need for capital in a very specific way for these really healthy deals. Otherwise, what happens then? How is preferred equity created, and how can other people jump into that? Yes. So I should say first that not every asset needs preferred equity. It's only those that are facing a situation like this where there's a, a potential capital shortfall. Um, so for example, right, we're talking about, you know, you purchase this property in 2021, the, the rate cap is expiring. Now what's happening is because interest rates have gone up, there's also, because of that, the values of these properties have in relation gone down. And so here you are trying to refinance. It's a higher interest rate environment and the property is not worth as much as you thought it would be at this point in time. So it's like a double whammy. And so this is where, you know, the preferred equity comes in because there's a shortfall in order to refinance or to purchase a new rate cap. You're kind of stuck. You're like, oh my gosh, I may have, you know, 5 million, 10 million in, in, a, in this gap to get to being able to even break even. And so this is what a lot of people are facing is that, you know, they can go and get new debt and refinance, or they can have the option to purchase a new rate cap, but it's going to be expensive. And so rather than do a capital call, which will dilute their existing investors' capital, 
They're looking to bring in new sources of funding through things like preferred equity, which sits at a different place in the capital stack, which we'll talk about. Um, but it really preferred equity when done right is really a, it's a win-win because it saves these assets that are, you know, as you mentioned, performing really well. Otherwise they're just kind of in a, a kind of in a, a lending pickle, so to speak. There's, there's some issues with the debt. Um, it's not that there's anything wrong with the property itself or the performance of the property. It's just the times that we live in um, and these, these properties are kind of stuck in this, this funky uh, lending situation. Debt moving forward. So now let's say this asset is held for another three to five years. What happens um, during that time period? So during that time period, the lender gets paid first as the debt. But then um, any of the available capital to distribute before the, uh, the common equity LP investors get paid out, the pref equity investors get paid out first. So it's debt first. Then next, we look at the pool of available capital to distribute. We pay the pref equity out first, and they're on a fixed rate of return, depending on the deal. It could be 7 8% or more. Um, so they get, um, and that's seven, eight percent annualized. Just wanted to to make sure. Um, so they get paid out um, before the common equity investors. So there might be a chance, especially in the times that we're in, that there's not enough to pay everybody. So what happens in that case? The pref equity still gets paid because they're ahead of everybody else. And so the with the common equity, there's no guarantee that there's going to be a return month to month or quarter to quarter. So only if there's enough money above and beyond the pref equity, then the common equity gets paid. Now, the difference is on the back end when the deal sells, the advantage goes to the common equity because they, for most of the common equity um, investment classes, they get a substantial piece of the upside. So they're getting paid a lot on the back end, but during the life of the hold, they may or may not get that reliable uh, monthly or quarterly income like the preferred equity investors would. 